What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here, and today we're looking at the Lelite Bianca version 3. So before we get into today's topic, I'm gonna to ask that you would take a moment, hit the like and subscribe if you have enjoyed past content of mine. If this is your first video, what's up, welcome. I hope you enjoy our nerdy time together. I also wanted to say that today's video is sponsored and I'm really excited about that. This is actually my first ever uh, sponsor for a video. So I wanna thank you for your support. You're the ones who made this happen. Uh, it's by Masterworks and I'll talk more about them later. But. Let's go ahead and dive straight in. There's a lot to talk about. I did a lot of rigorous testing, so I'm gonna go essentially as quickly as possible going through a lot of this. Hopefully I don't um, skirt anything that you might've wanted a bit more information on, but I'm gonna try to do my best to get through everything I can in a reasonable amount of time. So let's go ahead and just hop straight in. The Lelite Bianca, this is their third version. It's a dual boiler espresso machine. Now one, the steam boiler is 1.5 liters. The brew boiler is 0.8 liters. The water tank here on the back is 2.5 liters. Now the water tank can be moved to any of the three blank sides, which I think is a really nice uh, uh, feature. Now, of course, as you see, this one is the painted one. The This one's black, they have a white one, uh, and it has wooden accents. Now, I wanted the walnut, uh, which is a, not available of stock for this machine, so I got a maple kit scent from some of their other machines, and it fits just like it would on other, other machines. I really like the black with the walnut. Um, and there's something else I needed to point out before going further. This is not stock for the machine. This is a piece that I bought from Smart Espresso Profiler. Uh, a, a guy named Gabor out in Hungary makes these. Uh, it's There's a Y splitter here, a pressure gauge, a manometer, and then a Bluetooth transducer. Now, what this allows me to do is to trace my pressure curves on my phone so I can share that with you all, and it allows me to kind of r uh, save and remember certain profiles that I really enjoyed. But it's gonna be really helpful in this video because I'm gonna be able to show you a little bit more that you won't really be able to get in other reviews. Now, just looking at the front, what we have here is a steam knob, a really nice wooden uh, accent here, a steam wand, and so this actuates the wand down here, and the wand itself is cool touch. So, let's go ahead and test this out. I'm gonna go ahead and get out the water. There we go. All right, here we go. I'm gonna hold it, and we're gonna see what happens. Look at that, on that sensitive part right between the fingers. Look at that. Easy. All right, so we've got cool touch there. Same with the hot water. Uh, no need to prove that. You just saw me be crazy with the steam. Next thing to pay attention to is that this is an E61 style group head. Now, uh, in a future video, I might break down exactly how the E61 group head works, but in, in short, you have a pure mushroom cap, you have a brew valve, below you have a pre-infusion valve, and at the bottom you have an exhaust valve. You can kind of imagine what's going on there. And it, it has kind of a communication with the brew boiler with two tubes, and you have what's called thermosiphoning going on. It actually, this is actually what was used in really old cars in order to cool and regulate the temperature of a radiator, which I think is really neat, a very efficient uh, process to be to be used. In an espresso machine, it was brilliant when it came out in 1961 by FEMA, which gives it kind of the E61 name. So this is an E61 style group head. There are some differences, and one big one is at the top, where you would normally just have a jiggler, this one has a needle valve. Now the needle valve is allowing you to control the aperture of where water's going through, which gives you complete control control over your flow rate. Now on this machine, I have measured it as low as about 0.4 or so milliliters a second. Maybe it can go a little lower, but it's hard to measure flow rate at that low uh, of a setting because it's kind of inconsistent in its drops. So around 0.2 to 0.4 and all the way open on mine is about 6.5. Now you can change where the needle is by taking this off and twisting it manually and putting this back on, but I like having the capability of going all the way down to no flow. So right now, when it's fully shut, I have it fully shut. Now, 
that is something you can add flow control onto other E61 groups, but this comes stock, which I think is really nice. Now, what's different about this machine to its predecessors are a couple of things. First of all, you have inside the LCC right here, the screen, what you have is a couple of new options. One is a temperature offset option. So what you have is a PID controller inside the brew boiler itself. And so what we set the temperature out here is what that probe is trying to regulate inside the boiler. Now, what we can do with the temperature offset is you can choose negative five or positive five all the way to negative 25 and positive 25 degrees Celsius. And what that will do is communicate to the boiler, once we have started our shot, it communicates to that PID, hey, we're gonna switch and we're gonna force hotter water in order to give the user whatever they're wanting. So let's say that you want the temperature to increase during your shot. You set your uh, brew boiler to begin with at 98 degrees. So the water is currently at 98. So when we flip the switch, it's coming out at that set temperature. Of course, it's gonna lose a few degrees getting to the group head to escape because, I mean, look at all the components here. There are a lot of places for heat to be lost. So it's traveling through quite a bit and touching a lot of brass on the inside. And so by the time it escapes, it's lost a few degrees. So with that offset, after this brew, this, this has been actuated, boom, you have the pump started and you have the brew boiler allowed to get into the group head itself. That water that is being filled by the pump, the cool water, is now have a t having a target of whatever your offset is. So if the offset is plus five, then and you're set at 98 degrees, then it's gonna aim for 103. If it's at 90 degrees and you have a minus five, then after you've actuated the group head by flipping the lever up, it's gonna aim for five degrees less than 90, so 85. So in theory, you're able to kind of temperature profile to an extent. Uh, the amount it's gonna move obviously uh, is, is dependent on that shot. Um, and we'll get back, back to that in a little bit. The second feature that is new on this one is the capability of controlling what's called low flow. So, and the, the one big difference, and you can upgrade your machine to this, you might need the distributor in your location to do it for you, but, because it requires a solenoid valve replacement and a few other things. But the solenoid in this one is a little different than normal. Normally, you just have an open and closed solenoid valve, uh, which gives you only one flow rate. This one, you're able to have a couple of different flow rates. So you have the fully open valve flow rate, which is on mine 6.5 mils a second when it's fully open. Um, and so that would mean at, if I'm just, if I just have it at full flow, normal flow, I don't add the low flow option. It's coming out at 6.5, depending on where the needle is. Low flow, will allow a different flow rate to exit the group head. And the different flow rate is around four mils a second. So this gives you a lower pressure beginning. So you can have a slower shot or a lower flow shot, which to your preference, you can do whatever you want during your shot with that. So you have the capability of starting with a low flow. So you can say at the beginning, I want the low flow to go until 10 seconds. And then you can turn the low flow off and you can have full flow 6.5 or wherever you have the needle valve. I want full flow, and then I want it to go back down automatically to that low flow to end the shot. So on the menu, you have the ability to set your time where it will stop, and then the time where it will start again. So let's say on the first one, we're gonna go ahead and just show you this. We're gonna toggle through the menu using the minus button. So we're toggling through, so here's low flow start. I'm gonna click plus, I'm gonna click on. It's gonna flash twice, and now it's set. So we can choose when we want that low flow to end at the beginning. So this will automatically start low flow when the start when the shot starts. And we can choose when we want low flow to end and for it to go straight to high flow. So if I choose 15 seconds, it's gonna give us that four mils a second until 15 seconds. Then we can have low flow final. So if we want it to come back, if we want low flow at the end, we can turn this on and then we go to, we want at, uh, let's say at 45 seconds, we want low flow to be actuated again. So that means if we were to kind of chart the flow, we start the shot, it's right about here. So it's at four or so mils a second. And then at 10 seconds or wherever you set the low flow to stop, it's gonna go to high flow until we restart it at 45 seconds. It goes back down to low flow. Okay, and if it doesn't make that noise, it's not doing all right. Okay, you also have a pre-infusion. So this, you can change 
to on. And so pre-infusion, I want, I want pre-infusion to go on for five seconds. And then I want pre-infusion to stay off or I want the, the pump to turn off for 10 seconds. So what that will do is literally when we start the shot, pre-infusion is gonna start. So it's pre-infusing for five seconds. Then right when it hits five, boom, pump turns off. The pressure will maintain in the head where there's a, pu a puck, there's no puck here. And it's gonna stay off for those 10 seconds because that's what I programmed it at. And then after 10 seconds right now, it goes back, okay? So you have the capability of controlling the pre-infusion and arrest period, all right? Uh, by uh, manually, it, uh, manually, automatically, I guess, turns that pump off and allows that water to just kind of infuse through the puck, and then you can restart it. So all of these are with the hopes that you are able to create a profile you like and repeat it without having to manually attempt it. Now I'm gonna show you, uh, I'm gonna put my skase in. It allows water to escape at around one to two mils a second, depending on the pressure build. Um, I'm gonna put that in there and show you how it graphs uh, if you were to do a low flow uh, pre-infusion everything kind of together so you have a visual of what actually is going on so let's get that set up and you'll be able to watch it along with us on the screen i have um, programmed 10 second pre-infusion 10 second off then I have like a 15 second or so low flow, and then I have high flow. So you're gonna be able to see kind of uh, everything going on. And we're gonna start that right now. Start. So I've started it. We are filling the group head with water. All right, so as you see, the pressure is rising, and that is pre-infusion. So it only got up to four bar. And now it's gonna go, the pump is off as it goes down, and the pressure is just kind of dissipating as it's going through the puck. And boom, it kicks back on. It doesn't get down to zero, but it's going now just to low flow. I have the next part programmed to low flow. So as you see, it's only at four bar yet again. It's And now it shoots up to full flow. And now we're up at nine bar, okay? And that, that high flow is going, it's going, it's going. And then I have programmed low flow, I believe at 45 seconds. So when you're in a couple seconds, it should shoot back down. Maybe it was at, there we go. So there you go, back down at 45 seconds, and now it's just gonna chill until I turn it off, which is right now. So as you see, if we look at that, that uh, the image that's on your screen right now, you see we had the pre-infusion, and so the pressure went up, but then the pump turns off. So the pressure is just dissipating as liquid is being pushed through the puck. And then the low flow comes in, it goes back to four bar, and it kind of lives there, and then shoots up to nine whenever the low flow is turned off, and then low flow is turned back on for the ending. So you can kind of create, as you see, your own specific style of profile. You can essentially emulate a lever profile in a way, the drop off of pressure when you go to low flow is super quick, like quicker than uh, is believable. But what is great is this is completely repeatable. You can have that all saved and you can go shot after shot after shot after shot. And it's going to maintain that pressure and that flow identically as long as you don't make, you know, aggressive changes in your grind size. So it's super repeatable. And then you're just dialing in your grind size to that profile. Now an annoyance is in order to go back to manual, you have to go through and disable all of those through that menu. It doesn't take a long time, but it is kind of like, I wish there was a reset all or something, uh, but there's not. One other thing to note is you need to have the valve fully open for it to look like this. You can still control the flow rate to an extent. Obviously, it's being controlled by the solenoid with the low and the high, but you can control even further that with this during it, but then you're really kind of negating the, the whole reason of creating an automated profile. So just know that you need this valve all the way open when you're doing that so that it's actually giving you that consistency that you're looking for. So I'm gonna get this set back up and we'll talk about some more options in that menu. The way that you access it since there's just two buttons is you hit the minus button. So we have what our brew temperature is at right here. This is our brew boiler temperature. In order to see what the current temperature is of the brew boiler, this is really weird, but it's accurate. You click the right side of the plus button. So like this. So it's really finicky. I don't love that, but um, that is how you check the current temperature, real time temperature. What this is showing is the kind of the ideal what you have it set at. The left side of the plus button shows you the steam boiler temperature in real time, like that. 131, 130, 131, 130. So it's showing you real time steam boiler temperature. Really weird decision there. I don't like it. Uh, it's just weird. Um, so we're going to go ahead and click the minus button, see what the next option is. So we have pre-infusion. I'm going to turn it off. In order to toggle, you have to click the plus button, and then you just go all the way down to off. Then it's going to flash a couple times, and it is set. Minus button for the next. Low flow. I'm going to turn this off, like so. 
you always have to click the plus button or it'll just toggle. So here we go. This is on. I'm going to turn it off like so. Then it will flash twice and boom, we're good. This is the brew offset temperature. You can go all the way up to 25. I'm not going to do it, or all the way down to negative 25. Now, I'm going to take a brief respite to talk about this, about temperature. I did a ton of temperature testing with this machine. I used a SCASE device, and I used the new Passato device, which is like this. I did them both, and this actually does uh, quite a great job in, in measuring it. Depending on the temperature you set the brew boiler, there is a four to seven degree offset between what you set the brew boiler at and what comes out of the group head. I set it to 98, 99, and typically what I get out is around 93 degrees, okay? So the so the temperature on it, 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 it loses a lot. So whatever you see the brew boiler at, that's what the PID is reading the real-time temp inside the brew boiler. So it still has to travel through all these pipes and come out. It's going to lose temperature. It's Even if you have this preheated perfectly, it's impossible. Now, talking of preheating, it takes this machine maybe 10 minutes for the brew boiler to come to full temp, uh, and maybe 15 or so for the steam boiler. But you're not able to use it right then. And it's because this uh, this uh, thermosiphoning takes a while to fully heat up the group head. Now, if you're using a dark, dark roasted coffee, you're probably fine right when the brew boiler is at temp because you don't need super hot water in order to brew a really nice dark roasted coffee. If you're using lighter coffees, honestly, you need to wait about 30 minutes after turning it on. It takes that long for the temperature to stabilize to the point where it's optimal for the heat needed for a lighter roasted coffee. So keep that in mind. It will take a while. You cannot take shortcuts with heating this monster up. You can sit there and flush the group. It's going to heat it up some, but that's not going to get it to the temperature it needs to be at. You need to just wait it out. With shot to shot temperature, it is important on all E61 style groups to flush before you pull your shot. And it's because of this recirculation, get rid of kind of the water that's stagnant. Uh, even though it is circulating, it's very slow process. Get rid of that, refill, and then go. That's going to give you the best results. I do a two or three second flush, and then I continue. And this is what gives me the best, most consistent results. I'm getting about 92 to 93 degrees and then at about the 20 to 25 second range is the temperature actually increases a bit so as it keeps feeding water in it does tend to get a little bit hotter over time as those avenues are getting really really hot uh, that the water's traveling through so keep that in mind now the temperature offset i did not find it to work at all the only uh, and i think it's because there's not really enough time for it to make a difference that water's moving so slowly and the water that's that's needed for the brew uh, is, is pretty much already there by the time it can reheat to a different degree. So I set it to negative 25 and plus 25 and did not see a difference. Now I'm gonna prove that just real quick, just so you can kind of see it with uh, with the, with this bad boy in there. And so you'll kind of see what's going on. I'm gonna set the offset to plus 25 degrees and you're gonna see that there's, there's no real change. All right, so as we see, we were up to about 94 and we're already dropping. We're oscillating around 90, 91, 92. All right, so one of the issues with this Passato is it has a big cavity it needs to fill, so that's why the, the temperature did that weird thing. It does, it, that's not real time. It's now at real time because the group head is full of water. So it's at 92.7, 92.8. With the SCASE, that has a lot less of a cavity. It sits around 92 to 92.5 when I'm setting at 98. So look, we have a plus 25 offset. We're about, I don't know, 25 seconds into the shot. And as you see, we're still at 92.7. I'm gonna let it keep going. Maybe it'll decide to increase at some point, but we're still at 92, 92.8, 92.9. Maybe we're seeing a little uptick. Maybe. 93.3, 93.4. So as you can see, there's just not enough water or time or anything for that offset to really do much. And I had it at the full amount. Now the same can be said about the negative 25. It doesn't really dip more than what is normal. And I think it's because everything is so preheated. If it was a more volatile system, maybe something that didn't retain heat as well, and it could change a lot faster, then you then it would be a nice, a nice addendum. But because the thermal mass is so massive, I mean a five kilogram group head, you're not gonna have much control over the temperature. It's gonna to do what it's going to do, which is a tiny uptick at about 25 seconds by a few tenths of a degree. Now, if in the future there's a way to more aggressively add cool water to lower temperature during the shot, I think that would be incredible. Maybe...
version four Lilith, who knows? Um, but I think that would be fantastic. I don't think you really ever need to raise the temperature during a shot. It's not the worst thing in the world. I would love to be able to do a declining temperature profile though. And this one just can't really do that. If anything, it's by a few tenths of a degree. But for the most part, the thermal stability on this is more than adequate. It does a good job of staying wherever it's at, but just know, you're gonna have to really crank up the temperature if you're doing light roasts and you want 95 degrees in the group head. That's a very difficult thing to accomplish. Now, one hack I have found is if you do offset to 25 and you run multiple uh, flushes in a row, you can raise the temperature up more and more. And eventually I was able to hit 96 degrees while the temperature was set at 98. So I think that's just because I was able to get hotter water through the system and it was heating all of this up even more intensely. And then after a few shots, I was able to hit that 96, but there was still no increase during the profile. So you're gonna really have to prime it up if you want those high temps. I don't find those high temps super necessary. Um, I, I tend to like, um, hitting that 93 to 95, which you can do by just setting the brew boiler to about 100, uh, because there is that, depending on the temperature, a four to seven degree offset. If you're at 100, it's gonna go 93, 94, maybe 95. If you're more like a four to five, four to six degree offset. If you're at 100, it's a bigger drop. If you're at like 94, the drop's only two or three degrees. So keep that in mind on the thermal stability here. It does a good job because the thermal siphon, but it doesn't do a great job shot to shot to shot. It can kind of go all over the place. So remember to flush really well and wait in between shots so it can get back to its equilibrium, back to its stasis. Okay, so I'm gonna cut in real quick and just say, this is a lot of money. And I know breaking the bank for something new is not super easy. It's not easy at all, actually, especially with the recession we're experiencing and the economic hardships of so many. So I wanted to, in consideration of the past year and the year ahead, I wanted to share something that might, might be helpful. A friend of mine, as you all know, Daddy Hoff, or as I call him, Daddy Hoff, James Hoffman, recently tipped me off to something that's that's pretty cool and surprisingly it has absolutely nothing to do with coffee. It was on his video about the vintage lever machine he bought in Italy on that uh, the Fame of President uh, 2 group. On that video, he talked about something that I thought was really intriguing that, again, not coffee related at all. After watching the video, I felt the need to check out what I saw, and I did, and I was impressed. Now, you have a few options with your money. You can either sit on it, put it in a bank account, put it in a low, a low risk savings fund, or you can do what people say and put it in the stock market and hope to see something in 10 years. But there's an alternative that you can check out. Now in that video, James was talking about an app called Masterworks that paid out tens of millions to investors in 2022 alone. But how'd they do it? Contemporary art. Yes, I'm talking Banksy, I'm talking Warhol. They give you the opportunity to invest in art. Now for starters, contemporary art has outpaced S&P by 131% from 95 to 2021. And while many investors' portfolios were getting crushed in 2022, Masterworks investors realized nine returns, earning investors 13.9%, 35%, and 10.4% on the last three exits. In fact, their performance has been so strong that CNBC, The Wall Street Journal, and CNN have all been raving about their performance. Naturally, Everyone is piling in. There's over 617,000 strong on the app right now. In fact, the demand is so high, Masterworks is looking to launch new offerings on a weekly basis. I've seen offerings sell out within hours, so I can't guarantee what's there today will be there tomorrow. If you're interested in Masterworks and want to gain priority access, I've added a referral link in the description below. Thanks so much to Masterworks for believing in me and helping with this video. Now let's continue with the review. All right, as we're winding things down here, I wanted to talk about like a few cons of the machine that I'm not a big fan of. Obviously we talked about how it's the temperature offset is a bit ineffective. Um, but on top of that, some of the issues with this is I am not a fan of the drip tray. And the reason is because it is so see-through and that is so shiny on the inside with that steel that any small besmirching ugly drips of espresso or something and it looks it just looks awful so i feel the need to like constantly clean the mess out of it because i can see it and it just shines in my eyes so brightly i don't i'm not a big fan of that i wish honestly i wish it was more covered i wish the tray uh, even if it was harder to clean i wish it was more covered up so i wouldn't have to look at that awful bit below and because the sides are mirrored they have a mirror finish it, the difference between a little layer of water and a ton of water is difficult to see the difference 
between. And so uh, many times I have pulled it out too late and spilled water everywhere. So that is quite a bit frustrating for me. Another qualm I have with it is some of the redundant features. So you have on here a sleep mode, which is great environmentally, eco the, the, uh, ecologically wise. It's, it's a great feature. But they also have a standby mode, which means at 30 minutes, the whole machine just kind of shuts down. And the, only, and, and the thing is, is in their manual, they don't talk about how to change this, which is really intriguing to me that they don't have that in there. So I'm just gonna show you how to do it right now. And it, there's a timestamp for this. So if you get this machine and you can't remember, this is how you do it. You turn the machine off, boop. You lift the lever up, you turn the machine on, and now that it's flashing, that means when you turn it back on, it's in standby mode. I don't want it to be standby mode. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower the lever, I'm gonna turn it off. Now it's in standby mode, okay? I want it not in standby though. So I'm gonna lift the lever, now I'm gonna turn it on, and now you see it's solid. That means we're good to go. We're back in no standby, so it's not gonna shut off at 30 minutes. So I can shut it, turn it off, Turn it back on, saves the setting. So now it won't shut off at 30 minutes. 30 minutes is an odd amount of time because it takes about 30 before you can really pull a shot. So I don't like the standby mode. In the menu, you can turn the steam boiler off. So you can have just the brew boiler on, which is really nice and what I do all of the time. I don't ever really steam with the steam on, even though it's perfectly capable, really smooth, four hole steam tip. It's a great steamer. Or you can have it set to where it'll go down to like 70 degrees in an idle state. So you have that ability, but it's kind of annoying how you have to go about deactivating the standby mode. Outside of that, I absolutely adore the machine. As you can, like, obviously, it has complete flow control out of the box. It does an incredible job with it. The thermal stability is shockingly good for an E61 style group. I have not ever reviewed an E61 on this channel or an E61 style because I just tend to not like them due to their thermal instability. This one does a pretty good job. And it's interesting that they're playing with thermodynamics with that temperature offset idea. Did it, did it work in execution? Not in my three days of t uh, temperature testing. Anyway, let's pull a shot and then let's, uh, let's finish. Oh, fantastic. I did a quick fill at about six and a half mils per second and then I shut it down uh, to kind of allow that pre-infusion to happen for a bit and then I came back to full flow until I hit nine and then slowly tapered off. Um, and it gave, gave me a really nice coffee. It has a lot of cranberries in it. I like dark chocolate and cranberry. It's, it's, a, it's a really nice. You actually have an external um, external access to the OPV, which is right back here on the back right. You just put a wrench under and you can change the OPV in real time. Fantastic, you don't have to open the top, you don't have to get around, mess around, take anything apart. It's literally external access. It's right here about, I don't know, four centimeters, three centimeters inside the casing of this machine, just on the bottom side. No, I have to take, nothing nothing taken apart. I think this is a fantastic value for its price. One of the best values for its price in coffee. I don't see a need to go really past this as far as price point, unless you are running a small commercial uh, cart or something like that. This thing has everything you really need unless you're wanting to do multiple shots in a row, as I said, shot to shot consistency is a little bit uh, difficult, a little bit to be desired as far as the temperature goes. Thank you for paying attention. Thank you for watching. Thank you to Masterworks for sponsoring the video. It means a whole lot to me. And uh, just thanks for the support. I am gonna continue drinking this tasty espresso that I flow profile on my Bianca and uh, hope to chat to you soon. Brew something tasty and cheers.